everybody, it's Friday, so it must be a bye day. I'm Eric Papenfus, and today we are going to talk about narratives of contactees and flying saucers from the 1950s, Amanda. Oh Why? Well, because some really, really interesting books came into the sort room, but also because this was a really interesting moment in time in American history. Uh, let's see, World War II had ended, the atomic age had begun, people were very concerned about the, the future of the planet. Um, but the space race hadn't really geared up. We didn't know too much about outer space or foreign planets or planetary rocketry travel or any of that. And prior to this, uh, the prevailing narrative in Hollywood and um, through people like um, Orson Welles, who did War of the Worlds, was basically that aliens were coming to, to kill us, to invade us. Um, and the contactees told a very different tale, Amanda. They told a tale of peace, love and understanding and it was very appealing and very popular so let's talk about this moment in time sure. shall we yeah and let's get right to the books so we're gonna start with a book by the sort of you know man who started it all so to speak and that was a man by the name of george adamski who wrote a series of books in the very early 50s called first flying saucers have landed <laughs> and then secondly inside the spaceships now, who was Adamski? Well, let's get a picture of Adamski here so you can see him. He was uh, a Polish-American. He lived in California, and he lived in an area of California that was right next to what at the time was the largest observatory with the most powerful telescope in the world, the Palomar uh, Observatory. And although he didn't have any formal academic training, Adamski sort of called himself a professor. He was a little bit of a mystic. And he would, and he was an amateur astronomer, and he would tell tales, and uh, people thought him uh, very wise. Well, the story goes, Amanda, in 1952, uh, November, he goes out into the California desert, and he starts looking with his telescope, and what does he see? He sees a mothership and flying saucers. Now, what's interesting about this book, his second book, is that some of the photos are reproduced. Mm -hmm. Let's get right to it. <laughs> there is a Venetian scout, uh, and then the mothership is more of a cigar-shaped oh figure. And what's nice about this is he dates the time of his photos, 9 a.m. by George Adamski <laughs> in 1951. Um, here you can see the back cover, and you can see basically the scouts hovering around this larger ship. I see. Now, back in 52, he goes into the desert and uh, he brings his Brownie Kodak camera. Are you familiar with the Brownie yes. camera boxes? These really not very, this is an era before Photoshop, I'll yeah. have you know, Amanda. <laughs> and he starts taking some pictures of the landscape. There's the landscape and lo and behold, when he gets home and he gets them developed, um, he does seem to maybe have captured a little flying saucer off there, but he, he also captures, if you blow up the image, well, an alien that comes down and greets him. And that alien's name is Orphan. And uh, let's listen to George Adamski here describe his meeting with Orthon in his own words. George, when was the first time that you were invited to be a guest in a flying saucer? Well, I don't remember exactly the, uh, the date, but it was the second time I met this man. See, I met him on... Uh, the one we 20. talked about last That's time. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And he took me out to, to what they call the mothership, which is the long one. And uh, then I observed everything in there as much as I could. They don't have the same kind of controls we have. That's the one, yeah. Uh, same kind of controls we have, but rather they have uh, a lot of buttons. Now, as you can tell from that recording, Amanda, he had a very matter-of-fact style. He was he was down to earth. Uh, he wasn't overselling it, and apparently he was a very captivating speaker. So people really wanted to believe it. Um, I told you you could blow the photos up and find Orthon. If you if you really blow it up, wow. you can see the first image ever captured of an alien uh, creature, sure. which I think is uh, I think is is important. Uh, that's uh, again that's the modern technology blowing blowing that up. Uh, it gets even more exciting, Amanda, because the alien leaves behind some footprints, which are photographed, and they make plaster casts of the footprints, which is really interesting. And, um, uh, and when those casts dry, you can begin to see a series of, well, writing, which uh, has never before really ever been deciphered. <laughs> and still to this day hasn't been fully deciphered, although some people claim they've, uh, they've deciphered it. 
All right. Um, what's really interesting about this book, uh, Amanda, is that it was a huge bestseller. Adamski had trouble getting his first book published, uh, and he had to co-write it with a British person named Desmond Leslie, who had written more of like a long-standing history of ufology going all the way back to the ancient times and Atlantis and Egypt and all of that. Mm. And he was just the very ending of that book. So this was his book where he really told his own story. And, um, and together, the book sold over 200,000 copies wow. in a very short period of time in the very early 50s. Let's look at this book because... Lo and behold, Amanda, it is signed wow. by George Adamski, probably at one of his lectures as he was traveling. And, um, and just so you can see, uh, it is it was published in New York, and it is a first edition from 1955. And it contains those photos. Adamski would also sell photos uh, that he took at, at his talks and whatnot. Um, the book does up the ante a little bit because he claims... Uh, uh, an additional sighting that takes uh, place uh, in uh, Los Angeles. He goes to Los Angeles and he is actually greeted this time by aliens that can speak English and they are from Mars and from Saturn. So um, the entire uh, solar system seems to be uh, <laughs> inhabited. They said, well, we are aware that you yourself have faced ridicule and criticism because of your persistence in proclaiming the reality of human life on other planets which your scientists say are incapable of maintaining life. So you can well imagine what would happen to us if we so much as hinted that our homes are on other planets, if we stated the simple truth that we've come to your Earth to work and to learn, just as some of you go to other nations to live and to study well, we would be labeled insane. All right. Pretty good the English. The second, yeah, not bad. The second <laughs> book is very interesting as well. And this is a book by Howard Menger, who is pretty much the East Coast version of Adamski. This comes out a little bit later in the 50s, post Sputnik, mm. um, and it's published by a imprint uh, which is dedicated to contactee enthusiasts by <laughs> Gray Barker called Saucerian. Well, hey, it's a big, <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, and he sort of ups, uh, sort of one ups um, Adamski because he says that he met his alien who was also from Venus back in World War II. He was fighting in Okinawa, Anawa. Um, the alien came down, spoke to him, and let me just read to you uh, briefly what he said. First, he said, it's all about reincarnation. Uh, Amanda, we're all aliens. We just don't know it quite yet until oh. we unlock it. But um, he warned him. He said something horrible is going to happen. And then a few days later, someone pressed a button and a fiery hell fell on Hiroshima. So he actually could have predicted um, the atomic age, but... Yeah, you know, it didn't happen. One interesting fact about this book is he very prominently features his wife oh. right here, whose name is not Marla, but is Connie. But he features his wife because his wife has also written a book that came out just about the same time, actually came out before that, called, yes, My Saturnian Lover. Wow. And um, among other highlights in this book, Amanda, is uh, a wonderful chapter called Saturnians Are Wonderful Lovers. Oh my. It's all about the essence. We won't get into that, but it's all about the essence. And what's interesting is he meets, he, unfortunately, Howard's already married, uh, but when he meets Connie slash Marla, he realizes that he actually was married to her in a previous life when he was from Saturn and she was from Venus. Mm. It's a long story. And you know what else? There's a secret cave in Pennsylvania. Oh, yes, we goodness. should get to that because I found that fascinating. Um, he, he goes, he goes, there is a Saturnian base about 150 miles from here, deep in the mountains of Pennsylvania. I make periodic trips there. So uh, we need to still discover that base. I also want you to know, uh, Amanda, that uh, Connie and Howard uh, also hear music, which they reproduce on an LP. And I think all of our by days have been leading to this moment. Would you please listen to some Saturnian music? And finally, we're going to end with a funny book. There's not much to say for this book, Amanda, but uh, it is, it is, it is, it sort of speaks for itself. It's Sex in Space, sure. a serious, serious story of about. Uh, well, well, it's got explicit content warning, so I can't, I can't open it up to you. But just suffice it to say that, um, well, um, uh, there's a lot of complications that go into this, but uh, someday, mm. someday we'll be able to make it work. And that's your story of contactees. <laughs> I hope you watch next week and every week, Fridays at noon, for more adventures in the world of books.